So in the beginning of the whole course, we started by compositing with other people's pixels. And we learned all the ways of like organizing and layering that culminated in animating using something that we had previously done and other things. In this part of the course, we're taking things we've already designed, like our spot illustration, creating custom type. And the spot illustration is all our own original stuff, our own coloring, our own line art. And now we're organizing and compositing all of that together into a poster. So the different elements, there is the vector black type. I have brought that in onto something at 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch. I'm building it on top of my sketch, but my sketch isn't adequate for the poster. I need to get the best spot illustration elements I can. So I opened up my PSD for assignment five, and I actually uh, improved the EPS line art by moving that. Just remember that you have control of all these different aspects. And then I added what's called an offset behind it, because I thought that would look cool. And I can play with this in different ways. So I'm going to show you all these different techniques for kind of finishing this off. But in order for that to work, you need to have the right elements in your poster. You want to have the right elements, but not too many elements. So I like the way I colored my spot illustration. There is no reason for me to copy over all of the different like duotone layers and all of these. Instead, what I can do is turn off the offset, turn off the backgrounds, and save this. Actually, I'll even show you a better way. I could save it as a PNG, which I usually would, and then move that in. And I, I probably should do that. So I'll just save that as a PNG. Save as a copy. And as a PNG, which means it has no background. And then I'm going to save it to not assignment five, where I originally made this spot illustration, but to assignment six. So I have it as a poster asset. Remember when we did assets for animation, the things we're going to make our poster out of. OK, what are the other things I want? I also want this offset. This background piece. So I'm going to turn off everything else. And I'm going to save this as a PNG. And actually, to do that, I have to do save a copy. And I'm going to call this my offset assignment six offset color, for lack of anything else, as a PNG. And it's going to go into my assignment six poster folder. And now I also want to have that EPS line art, right? So I can't save that as a PNG, otherwise it takes out the EPS. So what I can do is move that from my assignment five. So here's assignment six. Let me open up my assignment five folder. And I want to bring that line art EPS that I've just improved, right? I'll show you. See how that little brick line is moved up? So this is an improved EPS. And I'm going to make a copy of that into assignment six. So how do you do that? You hold down option while you drag and drop it. You'll see a little plus sign, and it will copy it in. I'm going to mark all of these with green. These are my assets for my poster. The green offset, the green type, the green line art, and the green PNG. I already had a PNG. Let's see which one is newer. I think it's this one. So the one that's already marked green. OK, so these are going to go into my poster. So I can turn off assignment five. I don't need to. S well, let's see. I'll save it as a PSD once I've turned everything back on.
And just, just like animation, understanding your own compositing elements is just as important. as understanding other people's pixels that you're using. And I'm going to try to make use of all these different elements. So now I'm going to bring them in. I already have the, the text. Now let's bring in the color illustration and place it. And because I'm placing it on top of my text, it already does, you know, the overlaps. But it's a little confusing, hit return, where, where black hits black, right? So now I'm going to bring in my offset, PNG. And that's going to run behind it. Now, because they're PNGs and they're not locked into a rectangle, that's why I always have to place them, even if they're the, already the right size. And then I'm going to push it behind. But I'm going to push the offset color. Well, actually, it doesn't look too bad when it's on top of the text. I can turn off my sketch so you can just see it on white. But I can also push that offset behind the text. which looks a little bit better. And then I want to bring in my EPS line art. And I'll show you why. And I want to scale that to fit. Hit return, and I can do the color overlay on it to make it a solid black instead of the CMYK black. But this is for things like color holds. This is for um, little internal offsets. Now I have all the elements for the text and imagery of my work. I think I made this a little big though. Let me shrink it down a tiny bit. There we go. And they're all smart objects, which means they will scale up to any size I need. Now it's time for a background to play with. Now I can always just make a duplicate of my blank white and say edit fill with gray because I want everyone to have some form of background. And then I'm going to hold down, I'm going to do command T, hold down shift and option or just option rather to give it a border. All right. Now I know the size of my background for my poster. I'm going to put some guides on it, and now I'm going to bring in some background textures that I think might be interesting. This was one I really liked. This is from a risograph print. We're going to talk about old ways of printing. And I'm going to hold down shift so I can distort this and make it fit within my guides. And this is where compositing kind of comes in. This looks like an old bowling trophy or something. Maybe I stretch it so that it's more symmetrical. Yeah. Maybe not perfectly symmetrical. And then maybe I stretch it down a little. Nice and vintage. Now, because I have those guides, I can then rasterize it, this background. And I have those guides to help me trim it and cut it out. 
to leave the border. Just using the rectangular marquee tool and deleting. And then I have this risograph texture. So compositing it in, make that bigger, stretch it across. And then just like we did back in the first half of the class, I can fade one in on another. I first have to rasterize it. I can improve it, clean it up, use things like clone stamp, a normal mode, But you can see how these background textures, they're made of lots of individual printing dots. This is what's called color separated. And then I can fade one into the other using opacity. And I can use different blending modes like soft light, pin light. And I can keep adding different textures, different effects, right? But ultimately, it's not too different than just having a gray background. How do I get these letters to stand out? Well, I probably want to color them, and I probably want to give them an offset. So to start with, lots of ways to do an offset. I can do it just on before I do it on my lettering, I can do it on my uh, spot illustration. I have it right now as colors, but I can also just go to my color illustration here, double click. This is just the, the color behind my line art, right? I can double click and I can add a stroke. This will be about the outside edge. And that stroke right now, I can play with the size, I can play with the opacity, the noisiness of it. That's pretty nice. It helps separate out, you know, the tower from, from the edges. But notice how it doesn't affect anything inside the spot illustration. It's just on the outside edge. I can do the same thing with the line art. I can add a stroke around the individual lines on the piece, right? So it can be really nice to have both of those aspects to control. And it can help with printing and clarity. And then we can see how that looks with the color offset behind that. And then with the backgrounds. So all of this is under your control and it's subtle and can be played with. And I can play with the opacity of them. So I like that, that stroke on the, the coloring, the color PNG, but let's take the opacity down a little bit. So more of that color comes through from my color offset. And maybe let's increase its size a little bit because I took the opacity down. Now what if I wanted this background to be more subtle? Let's turn off the 